everyone, Maria Menunos here, host of Extra and author of The Every Girl's Guide to Diet and Fitness, on set of my fun photo shoot for the cover of Fitness RX. So the workouts we just did really require minimal tools. You can have a mat, a medicine ball, resistance bands, and a pair of dumbbells, and pretty much do all the workouts I did today, as well as the ones all featured in my book. You could also omit the dumbbells if you don't have them and just use the resistance bands. When we did the lunges, you could use the resistance bands for them. I like to use the most inexpensive equipment and the most uh, convenient <laughs> to store, convenient to travel with. My favorite workout today was the buddy ball twist. I am a very big advocate of working out with your friends. It gives you social time and it's a great way to get a workout in without really working out. And anything with a medicine ball and a buddy is just fun. So my friend Andrea Orbeck, who is also a fabulous trainer to the stars, was doing it with me today and we just had fun. I also like doing solo medicine ball workouts because again, something about it being a ball makes it so much more fun than just straight crunches. I don't have a typical workout week because my schedule is so erratic, I'm traveling all the time. And because I eat fairly well, I can stay consistent with my weight. For the most part, I fluctuate a couple pounds here and there. Um, so I just work out when I can and I make sure that when I know I'm never gonna get to the gym, which I haven't been to the gym in probably hmm, two months maybe, I make sure I get my steps in. And I talk a lot about that in my book. Um, trying to aim for 10,000 steps a day is my goal. When I started to actually count my steps is when I realized I get 18,000 a day and maybe that's why I don't necessarily need to go to the gym a lot. And that's another thing I talk to um, my readers about in the book because I really feel like if people focused on their steps and getting their workouts in throughout their day like that, it would be less arduous to kind of tackle in your mind. But then there are times when I do get to go to the gym and I get some workouts in. I'm not generally a fan of them, but uh, sometimes it's nice to get on a good piece of equipment and do it that way too. The Every Girl's Guide to Diet and Fitness is a follow-up to my first book, The Every Girl's Guide to Life. And basically, women always ask me how I lost 40 pounds and kept it off everywhere I go. And I made sure I included it in the first book, but this is really just a bigger, bigger um, extension of it because there's so much that I've learned even since I wrote that book. And revelations, like for example, um, realizing that I do get so many steps a day. Because a lot of people would say to me that my metabolism is why I'm able to stay thin. And I said, well, where was my metabolism when I gained 40 pounds and was a size 14 and growing? The reality is I get my workouts in throughout my day. I get it with getting 10,000 plus steps a day. And then when I get to work out, that's a bonus if I get to go on a hike on a weekend. So my book really is about fitness for the every girl, trying to incorporate it in throughout your day, trying to show that you can have a healthy balance with your food and eat what you want if you do all of these other things in conjunction with it. And it's really about focusing on the 50 year plan and realizing that you want to be healthy, not skinny. Skinny can be a byproduct of being healthy, but it really is about being healthy and strong. And my dad is such an inspiration to me. So when I see that he's almost 70 and has had type one diabetes for over 40 years and he's cut and he's never worked out a day in his life and he's got a six pack and he's in great shape because his workouts came in the form of physical labor, which is what he did for a living but also was a byproduct of his diet because he ate very clean foods, all foods that came from the ground. And so I have a lot of tips and secrets that I share in the book that I know will help the every girl out there lose weight, maintain their weight, whatever it is that they wanna do, but most of all, stay healthy. I have a lot of tips for women who are striving to lose weight. I think some of my biggest ones would be to journal everything you eat for a week. That's what I did when I embarked on my weight loss journey. I didn't know what I was doing, I just was creating this on my own. And so I wrote everything down that I ate for a week. And at the end of the week, I looked at it and evaluated it and was shocked to see what I ate in a week because we always convince ourselves that we don't eat that much and we just can't believe why we've gained so much weight. That's exactly where my head was at. And when I saw it on writing, I'm like, oh gosh, 
Okay, carbs, that's my problem. Now for someone else, it may be sugar, it may be salt, who knows? For me, it was carbs, so I slowly started to cut back. So one would be journaling it. Two, don't tell anyone you're on a diet. You completely set yourself up for failure and you put all these pressures and expectations on yourself. And one of the biggest things I tell women too is, this would be maybe my third tip, but I have like 80,000 and that's why I wrote a whole book about it, um, is when you're starting it, it's always hard. So you have to kind of just tense up and get ready for a couple of days of just, it's sucking. You're gonna want to eat things that you shouldn't necessarily eat, right? And so I have always had the mentality of when I'm trying to clean out my diet or when I was losing weight, okay, yes, I wanna have that ice cream sundae. But I've had a million of those throughout the years. What I want now more than that is I want to get fit. And if I say no to this now, I will be one step closer to my goal. And I would just take it day by day, choice by choice, and it makes a big difference because once you start saying no, then you have to get addicted to the high of saying no. And it really works. It's just those first couple of days on any kind of plan. Even now, if I'm trying to get ready for a fitness cover or I want to clean out my diet and you know, I'm like, oh, and I really want to go have french fries and a cheeseburger. And I'm like, oh, I've had it a million times. I can get through it. And you just got to say no. So that's kind of two and three. But my other big secret is hot water and lemon or plain hot water. It's detoxifying, it's de-stressing, it helps digest the food in your stomach. Um, I most recently turned to it before I went to Cabo on vacation. I was just like, you know what, I really wanna clean out my diet for the week and I made sure that I ate whatever I wanted throughout the week, but I had lots of hot water and lemon. Really flattens everything out. Living Fit has helped me manage my busy career tremendously because when I first moved to LA, I had lost 40 pounds. And when you looked at me, you would think I was healthy, but I wasn't because I wasn't eating the right things. And you know, I was going through fast food constantly because I thought that's all I had time to do. And when I made that switch and I omitted fast food for the most part from my diet and really started to focus on eating healthy and considering food as a fuel, for your body. You wouldn't put bad gas, you wouldn't put cheap gas in your car. Sometimes we do when we don't have money, but <laughs> when you have the option, you wanna put the best kind of gas you can in your car. Um, your body is your car. You want to fuel it with the best things. And once I made that switch, um, I talk about this journey in my book. I was in and out of the hospital prior to that. You know, dehydration, low potassium, all kinds of things. And now I'm really healthy, really strong, and it helps me with those long days and it helps give me the energy to tackle more and more every day. Hope you like the workouts and for more workouts and my secrets and tips to staying fit, get my book, The Every Girl's Guide to Diet and Fitness, available now.